So let me ask you a question. Are you struggling with some kind of limiting beliefs about getting started with multifamily? Do you think maybe that you don't have enough experience? Maybe you don't have enough money. Maybe you don't know anyone with money. Maybe you're too young. You're too old. Uh, maybe you think the market's too hot right now, or maybe you think you don't have the time. If you're struggling with any of these kind of limited beliefs, this episode is for you because today I have a, my good friend Rod Cleef on the show. We're going to drill down on how to overcome these limiting beliefs and success habits of those people who are actually successful. So stay tuned. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, before we get into the show, I just want to remind you that tickets to DealMaker Live are on sale at DealMakerLiveEvent.com. It's going to be in Dallas at the Hilton Anatole July 16 to 18. So if you were there last year, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I know you're coming back. And I know a lot of you guys missed that event. And people have told you it was awesome, which it was. So make sure you grab your tickets. Uh, the ticket prices go up as we get closer to the event. So right now are the cheapest tickets you can get. It's at DealMakerLiveEvent.com. We are going to have a fantastic speakers. We're going to cover everything from finding deals to raising money to creating online platforms to raise more money. And the networking is going to be fantastic. So make sure you grab your tickets, dealmakerliveevent.com. And that is Dealmaker Live in July at the Hilton Anatole in Dallas. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into the show here. We want to dive down on some limiting beliefs, peop uh, beliefs that keep people from getting started with multifamily. Everything from I'm too young, I don't have any money, I don't have experience. And to help us unpack that is Rod Cleef, successful podcaster and multifamily educator in his own right and author. And he really loves talking about that. You're going to see his passion come through in debunking some of these limiting beliefs and also looking at things and patterns and mindset and success habits that success people have. And hopefully you can keep up and scribble as fast as you can if you can. All right, let's get right in the show. Rod, welcome to the show today. It is so freaking awesome to be back, my friend. So, and, and you are a friend. You know, when I say my friend, sometimes it's just a statement, but you are my friend. We collaborate, even though we're in the same business. Uh, it's such a treat to connect with you and have some time with you. And, and uh, you know, the fact that neither one of us have a scarcity mindset. We're just out to serve and help other people. It's a, just a beautiful thing to be here to hopefully add some value to your listener base, my friend. Yeah, you're always adding value, Rod, which is why I've had you on now for the third time, which doesn't happen very often. I think the first episode was episode 38, way back when, and 80, wow. episode 88, we just surpassed uh, 200. So it's it's uh, wow. been a while since we have, but it's always a pleasure to have you. What I want to talk to you about today, Rod, is you know, you're, so, you're working with people in multifamily. You're working with new people, people with experience, people without experience, people with money, people without money. You know, we're all educating people how to get started in multifamily so that, you know, we can become financially free. But I want to talk to you about uh, the psychology of, of, you know, why some people are successful and why some are not. And I've, I've been studying this now for years because it always puzzles me a little bit. You know, some people take action and they sign up for a course or even, you know, coaching and then they fall away. Some people do and they be successful. Some people don't buy anything and they just grind their way through and they become successful. And I'm just, in just so what I, what I want to do is I want to talk about today about things that uh, why people aren't successful maybe the excuses they have and the limiting beliefs but then yeah. also flipping it around to hey what are the some of the habits and the mindset of successful people because both you and i have really seen a lot of patterns in, in both and so sure. i want to talk to you about kind of the first uh, the, kind of on, on the more negative side things are limiting beliefs and that I hear mm -hmm. all the time, and I'm just going to run through some of them. I'd love to get your feedback on, on, on some of those and kind of what you think about it. But you know, one of them in no particular order that, that I hear a lot is, this is great, uh, and I, I, I get it, but you know, I don't have the time right now. Like, mm -hmm. What do you say to that? Well, I, I will just say this, and let, let's, let's globally talk about all of them, okay? And that is their stories, okay? People have stories that they tell themselves, which are really nothing more than circuit breakers, okay? Because they, want, they don't want to be disgusted with themselves for their lack of action. So, they tell themselves a story. And there's all sorts of them, like I don't have time. I'm too old. I'm too young. You know, I'm not analytical enough. That was one of mine. I was, I'm too young. That used to be one of mine. You know, um, I, I, again, you're one about I don't have the time. Well, Really, you have the same amount of time Elon Musk has, same amount of time, you know, Bill Gates had, same amount of time Jeff Bezos has. And, and you know, and, and they, they achieved success regardless of the amount of time that they had. And I will tell you, you and I both have students that have, that have, that have retired from their core jobs 
uh, with their, you know, building their side hustle, one apartment building at a time with kids, with full-time jobs, they've done it. So we know that it's never about the time. It's just, it, it's just not important enough, bottom line. And, and, you know, I think, I think you and I did, uh, we talked about goal setting on a previous episode because, you know, you have to want it. You have to have that burning desire like Napoleon Hill says. And so, you know, any of these stories um, really, are, like I said, are circuit breakers, my friend. Uh, that's, that's, you know, that's yeah. the truth of it. Yeah, it's, it's, and a similar one, I think you said it, it's not so much time management. It's about, how, you know, setting priorities. And this is when people always say, oh, I, I'm having trouble fitting this in. We go back to their priorities in life. And, hey, maybe it's not important to you right now. You know, another one, though, this is somewhat related but a little bit different. Hey, is, before you, before you yeah. move on, I'll show you something. Yeah. I'll show you something. On yeah. my wall here, I've got a sign that says, focus, grind now, play later. Boom. And, 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 and that's what it takes. You got to want it. I gotta, you got to grind now, the sweat, the blood, the tears, the early mornings, the late nights. You got to want it. So, so what was the next one? Sorry, I just wanted to. Yeah, no, yeah, and, and I think we, we're going to get to get get to some of that. I think you're you're so right, and that's one thing successful people have have in common is they, they that grind that hustle. Uh, but one of them that's that's come up, you know, obviously the last year or so is hey, the market, right? Are we at the right time in the market? Maybe I should wait till we get a correction. It's too hot right now. Maybe I should wait. Sure, sure, sure. And and let me say this: it is a hot market right now, um, and and there's a lot of mistakes being made right now. But that said. We've got 500 doors under contract in three states, and they're all screaming deals. But you know, we had to kiss a lot of frogs to find them, and we want it. And so we're we're out there kicking butt, you know, kissing a lot of frogs, evaluating a lot of deals, building relationships with brokers, and doing whatever we have to do to get a lot of deals coming across our desk. We've built our team, you know, to to have other people helping us, and all these things, these steps that we take. It's about team building. It's about but 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 it, the foundation to that one as well is it's a story you just got to want it and and you know so so like 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 uh the previous one um you, you really need to evaluate what it is you want get really clear with clarity do the goal setting um you know do do the visualization get pictures of what you want i've got pictures of the things that i want because that's what's going to push you through all of these yeah what, I, what, what, well, let's hear some more I want yeah to no I, I i love this you said a few things and the things that come through here as a, as a pattern is you got to want it right you got to want it which goes back to your why you know why are you doing these things super important and then if you really want it then naturally you're gonna you're gonna hustle for it. you're gonna grind for it. and you, you mentioned the fact that hey you looked at a bunch of you know kissed a bunch of frogs to get there and i'm, I'm always surprised when people say oh I, you know, I put in some offers and you know i got no 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 offers accepted this obviously isn't working i'm thinking are you kidding me right now anyone who comes from the single family house investing and any any they, they know it's a numbers game right so making five offers is ridiculous they're used to making offers in the dozens and the hundreds and yet somehow when we get to apartment buildings oh i'll make five offers and surely that must work and so the point what you're making and this is a good one is you got to want it and you got to hustle right and so that will cut through a lot of the other other noise this and the other things well, the other things i hear is oh my gosh i you know i don't have any experience you know let me let me accumulate some experience, uh, single family house investing for the next five or 10 years. Uh, and let me wait until I get that and then I'll jump in. Let me say something to that. This is the best freaking time to learn this business. Be it with Michael, with me, whatever, learn this business. Why? Because we are heading into a contraction. And when that happens, there will be exponential opportunities to make money. But if you haven't set up your team, if you haven't built your relationships, if you haven't, you know, uh, uh, learn this business, learn how to evaluate deals, learn how to know if a deal is a good deal, understand due diligence, all these things that you have to master to do this business. It, and, and it happens, it's too late. So this is the perfect freaking time to learn the business so that you can capitalize on it. Like, you know, if you listen to my podcast and your podcast, you'll start to see a pattern. The guys with thousands of doors, many of them, most of them, at least from my experience, started in 09, 10, and 11. That's what we call a clue, my friends. That was after the crash, you know, and, the, and, and so the point is there will be incredible opportunity. There's an opportunity now. We're buying five, 500 doors. They're screaming deals. Low, low, low leverage, high returns. But um, again, it, it all comes down. You know, we can all have these stories. You know, I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have enough experience. I'm not analytical. I'm not outgoing. I'm not, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just, listen, 
How bad do you want financial freedom? How bad do you want the freedom to, to, to spend time with those, the people in your life that freaking matter? You know, how bad do you want, you know, the material things in your life? You know, the, 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 the life you see other people having. You got to want it and, and you got to focus on it. And I have pictures of the things that I want around me because you, you've got to keep it in your subconscious so that, you know, and then here's one other piece. And this is an important piece. And that is you have to celebrate any progress or growth that you make because you're going to have setbacks. Things are going to take longer than you think they're going to take. But if, if when you're doing your weekly planning, and, and I did a whole thing on my Facebook page on this, if you want to Google um, goal setting on my Facebook official page. I did this hundred uh, 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 hour and 20 minute thing on goals, but I also did a planning process that I take people through. And one of the pieces of that weekly planning process is to look back at what you got done and pat yourself on the back consciously because it's never about achieving the goals. I tell the story, one of the first stories I tell at my live events is, is building this $8 million house on the beach within two months. I worked for this thing for 20 years. Within two months, I was depressed because it's never about the goal. It's about growing and progressing. So a critical piece in this conversation is making sure that you celebrate what you got done so that when the setback happens and when the, you get your nose bloodied, which is inevitable, it's going to happen. Uh, and when it happens, you're still happy because you've built up because you're growing and progressing. All right, so we talked about a few things. We talked about you really want to you really want it, right? You got to want to have that. Got to want it. We we talked about, you know, hustling. And one of the things I'm noticing is that people who are doing deals and there are people doing deals, one thing sure. regardless of their background and their financial it doesn't really matter. The one thing they all have in common is 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 hustle. And and then that that's definitely a common factor that I'm seeing as as well. And uh, sure. what are some of the other things that you're seeing successful people well, it, do it, yeah. or be that, that makes them successful? Right. Right. There are strategies. There are strategies. The first one is you got to want it. Burning desire, like Napoleon Hill says in Think and Grow Rich. You know, I, 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 when I started out, um, I we were poor. I wore clothes from the Goodwill and Salvation Army through junior high school. And I, and I worked with a guy that had a lot of money at a three car garage blew me away. I'd never seen a three car garage Corvettes, Lincoln Continentals and, you know, snowmobiles and motorcycles and all the toys. And it was like, and when I experienced that, it's like, you know what, that's what I want. And so I got a burning desire. Uh, and, and I didn't even know, you know, consciously what I was doing at the time that, that, you know, when I look back on it, I realized, you know, I was setting goals, and, and I was achieving those goals, but, but without really a formal framework like I have now. But, you know, the, the, you, got, you got to want the goals. So, so if, you, if you want to watch my, that goal setting thing on my Facebook Live page, I think you'll really like it. It's, it was really, I had literally 5,000 views, so people really liked it. Um, but then you've got to also have positive expectation. You've got to have optimism because it's, you know, it's so easy in this world. You know, people connect through pain and suffering. You know, um, like, like I hate to use this example, well, no, I'm not going to use that example, but, but people, they, they, they connect through pain. If you go up to somebody and, and say, how are you doing? And they say, oh my God, it's freaking amazing. I love life. It's so beautiful. They'll step back 10 paces and go, oh, you know, holy cow, this guy's crazy. But if you, if you ask someone how they're doing, they say, oh, you know, like I, like I did with you before we started recording, I, I tore my meniscus. I just found out today. I just fell into the same thing I'm talking about not to do here because we connect through pain. So you gotta, you gotta, you focus on optimism, bring in the good stuff, stand guard at the door to your mind. There's so much negative crack out there. Don't get me started on politics. And, and, you know, I don't watch the news anymore unless I want amusement, literally just for amusement. But, but, you know, so you, you want to, you have to have positive expectation. You have to expect to win. You can't operate from fear and, 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 and focus is also critical. But I'll give you a great positive expectation example. So I want, you know, I'm a wide guy. I'm a really wide guy. And, and when I go to a boot camp and I've gone to hundreds, literally, I did a, I did a, a picture on my Facebook page with all the lanyards from, I had my arms wide open. I had hundreds of lanyards around my neck and on my arms. But so I go to boot camps. That's my college education. And I, I have to be on the aisle because I'm so wide. So I always get there early. I'm always first in line. I run to a seat. Well, I was late to this boot camp. And I, there was one seat left in the middle of a row. And I'm like, freaking miserable. There were two seats, actually. And I sat there and there was one seat next to me. And all of a sudden I see this giant woman bumping people's drinks over and coming down the aisle. And, and I could have decided to have a horrible experience, but I just consciously, I remembered someone telling me, you know, 
as you say it, so shall it be, and just decide to have a good time. And I welcomed her and I put my arms out and we had a blast. And so that's a, that's a maybe not the greatest example of positive expectation, but another thing that I do every day, I do a little visualization in the morning and I make a declaration that it's going to be a great day, consciously, out loud. Say, it's going to be an amazing freaking day. And it usually is because it's positive expectation. So, and I, lo I love that a, positive expectation. Yeah. Now, sometimes though, the days are not good and, and you can't, right. you know, you can't imagine them away. How do you deal with setbacks and challenges? Cause they, yep. like you said, they invariably come there. And uh, you know, if you have a, let's say you do a positive affirmation, like you said, and then the day turns out like crap, right? You're like, crap, right. these affirmations don't work and you turn negative. How do you deal with challenges, uh, delays and setbacks? Sure. Sure, sure. Well, there are lots of ways to mitigate stress. For me, exercise really helps. I lift weights. Resistance training is critical for stress. But um, focus is the most important thing because whatever you focus on grows, positive or negative, okay? So like I'll have students reach out to me and say, you know, I'm trying to get rid of this student loan debt. And I say, wrong thing to say. Focus on the money you need, not the debt, because what you focus on gets bigger. So, so a, a fantastic example of this dynamic is they used to ask, they'd ask Mother Teresa if she was anti-war. And she said, no, I'm pro-peace. Yeah. See, that's the distinction. It's the words focus, you use. Focus. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so critical that you focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Um, and, and, and so, you know, that's, that's the way to get out of it is, is to reassociate. You know, when I lost $50 million, Michael, in 2009, you know, my biggest seminar in life, it would have been really, I mean, people jumped out of buildings in the Great Depression over losing less than that. And so, you know, it was painful. But what, what got me back on track was remembering what I wanted and why I wanted it. And, you know, that's how I was able to, you know, get back to, to be blessed to have the success that I enjoy today because I thought I was set for life. And, and so that focus and, and, and remembering what I wanted and why I wanted it was critical. Yeah, that, that must have been painful for you. Uh, I know Dude. I know it was for me because because before my <laughs> before my entrepreneurship, I, I thought I was set for life and then I lost it all. Uh, and you basically lost it all as well. And, and it's, it's amazing when you feel like you're set for life, complacency and possibly arrogance sets in. And when the rug is pulled out from underneath you, it is a highly unsettling experience that makes you angry and, and, humbling. and, and, and humbling. humbling as so, well. <laughs> so, I mean, how did you, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, you could have literally said, hey, this life sucks. Like you could have done sure, a variety yeah, of sure, things. Sure, and, sure, I could have ended it. And then maybe, so could end how, did you, how did you kind of get through that? So what are some of the phases that maybe, you know, mentally you went through there? Well, it's almost like a grieving process, you know, where you where you go through where you go th through a grieving process and you end up with resolve. And that's really what happened to me. But I will tell you, I was underneath a rock for a couple of couple of months, you know, just a couple months. Was, yeah, I think it was it wasn't much longer than that because because I was blessed to have put myself in a in a thriving environment. I joined Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership Mastermind. So I was around people that were crushing it in the crash. You know, it was people that were thriving while all my friends and I were dying, you know. So I, I surrounded myself with people that were thriving. I got a coach, a really good coach, expensive coach, five grand a month. Taught, uh, and, 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 you know, that's what kept me, that's what helped me redirect. Because I knew this stuff from being around Tony for, you know, following him around for 20 years. I knew what I had to do, thank God. Because... Again, without those resources, without that technology um, that had been hammered into my brain from doing his events for years, you know, who knows how I could have ended up. Uh, and, and so, you know, it, it, it really was all about redirecting focus, Michael. That really is probably the most important piece um, because it's so easy when you, when you get your butt kicked to focus on that. And, and, and again, what you focus on grows. Thoughts really are things. And, you know, I didn't realize all of this in a technical standpoint to, to the degree that I did when I saw, first saw the movie, The Secret, you know, that about the law of attraction. I've given away thousands of copies of that thing, but, 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 you know, if you haven't watched that movie or read the book, it's about the law of attraction, incredibly powerful. And I'm like, this is what I've done for 20 years. And, and it was so validating to see, you know, it described in the way that they described it. But then, of course, being around Tony as well. Yeah, that's right. Focus is everything. Yeah, right. I, I, I love that. So focus is really important for, for me in, in my you know journey. I realized that I, I couldn't control everything, which was really unsettling to me because before I became an entrepreneur, I, I felt like I controlled everything. And then once I realized I couldn't and it was a kind of a surrender, it was a lot better for me. I remember interviewing Hal Elrod last year uh, in his book, The Miracle Equation. He has this, this five-minute rule or whatever he calls. And he basically says for five minutes, when something bad happens, you can rant and rave and punch a hole in the wall and cuss and swear. And then after that time's up, you say, hey, 
and I think you can't change it and you move forward with it uh, because you Love literally yeah, can't, he's a great you guy. can't really change it. And I think to me that, that, that that's probably the biggest lesson is and, and my cycle, my the length of time I spent in misery uh, shortened over time. I'm a slow learner. So in, in the beginning, it was like months. And then I, you know, then you finally come around, you accept it and you're like, surely you can't get any worse. And it gets worse and yeah, you, your cycle repeats. And then you're like, oh, maybe I can actually make it pleasant, more pleasant for myself if I simply accept what is, and and like you said, <laughs> refocus. What what are some of the other Redirect. what are some of the other habits yeah. or disciplines maybe that that you've uh, sure. implemented in your sure, in yourself? Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Well, I I I think it's not just for me. First of all, you got to take the first step. You know, I know Michael. You talked about the law, of the first deal, I, as I do as well. You know, it's, we've seen it time and time again. Somebody gets that first property, and then they're like freaking dominoes. They're like, "Is that all there is?" And then they're not. The fear's gone, so they go. You know, but you got to take that first step, like Dr. Martin Luther King said. You you don't have to see the whole staircase. Take that first step in faith. Lao Tzu said, "The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step," and that's the bottom line. Is is you got to take that first step. You don't worry about the whole journey. You just take massive freaking action okay then you have to commit you 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 can't be like i'm thinking about doing this i hope to do this i'm going to try to do this no it is freaking done okay you decide and it is and and when you know the the latin root of the word decision means to cut off meaning it's done it's not a one foot in one thing at one mm. foot out committed is like a train on a track committed equals massive action committed means it's not a dream anymore it's an outcome now, motivation will get you started. Goals will get you started. But commitment yeah. is what gets you home. And, this, and so and you'll appreciate critical. this. You'll appreciate this. This is one of my favorite quotes. It's from from your mentor, Tony Robbins, right? Isn't this? It's in your moments of your decision that your destiny is shaped. Yeah, yeah that is an awesome quote. And, and, you just got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. But, but it's not like a wishy-washy thing. Right. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this. And there is no stopping it, period. Period. I, I th that's a decision. I think it's at the root of why people are some successful and some are not. I think it's the root. If I trace people's actions back, uh, people who are successful can trace their action back to a decision point. Many times they can they can remember the exact time they decided fundamentally decided something in their heart. They decided then and there that their current situation was unacceptable to them and they cannot be in the same place this time next year versus people who maybe take a step. They sign up for a seminar. They do this and they're all excited. And then six weeks later, they, they, they Peter, they're gone. And, when and, and, and then they bring the stories in. Then they bring the stories why in. Why is that? Because I will tell you, disgust is a powerful thing. And you'll see a lot of decisions happen when you get to that place where it's like, okay, I'm, I, it's going to happen now. And, and you get to that because you didn't allow yourself off the hook with a story, with a circuit breaker. Okay. And, and that's, that's just such a critical piece. Now, let me say something else. After you commit, Michael, I would recommend, and I don't know if you feel the same way I do about this, that you play to your strengths, okay? And, and like in this multifamily space, I find people that are more analytical versus people that are more outgoing sometimes. And, and very often those people need to align to create an incredible partnership. Sometimes people have both, but very often they'll need to align. And I'm gonna here to tell you, and I don't know if you agree, but, but I say play to your strengths Hire, align, or partner for your weaknesses because you're going to get further faster. Do you agree? Yeah, with that? I totally agree with you, and that's another success factor that I'm seeing. And this is one of the things I love about this business. It's really hard to do in almost any other business I can possibly think of, except for multifamily syndications. And I totally agree with you. I think, I think while everyone should try to improve and possibly oh, sure. work on weaknesses, it's kind of an uphill battle. So I'm with you. I think focus on your strength. What are you good at? And then, uh, and then partner or joint venture with someone. And we see that a lot. Absolutely. I mean, especially what you just mentioned that split between. Hey, I'm more analytical, detail-oriented, uh, and then the other person is not, and they're, but they're much more relationship-oriented, right? So one person becomes a deal finder, one person becomes a capital raiser, and it's a match made in heaven. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and by the way, if you're going to get into a partnership, you got to ask all the hard questions up front. And I've got this, this list of questions that I came up with, um, and I'll give it to your listeners for free. It, they text partnership to 41411. You know, it's, it's, it's because... I've had partnerships that have failed. I have people in my mastermind, big thousands of doors that have partnerships that have failed because they didn't ask the hard questions up front. They didn't trust their intuition. We're going on a side road here, but if you text partnership to 41411, it's a complete list of every possible question you'd want to ask. And I'll leave one last piece on that. Trust your gut as well. If your gut doesn't feel right, trust it. Every time I have ignored my gut, my intuition, I've regretted it. 
So I just want yeah, to that's, that in. that's good. But I, I got I got to say, so I think that one the other thing I love about multifamily syndications is that partnerships, uh, you know, are really on a deal deal by deal basic. It's not for yep. the rest of your yep. life. So even if your partnership right. goes away, it doesn't mean that you're doing the next ten deals together. It could mean that yeah. you've done maybe one or two. So thankfully, you only have to deal with that partner in a limited a limited way. way. Another thing if, I love if about if you set that, it up that way, you're absolutely yeah, right, yeah, buddy. You're exactly. absolutely right. What what else comes to mind, so let's, Rod? What what else are successful? That, let's talk people about doing? let's talk about passion and influence okay. because if you're going to in, in and in the multifamily space you need to influence brokers sellers in potential investors partners like we just talked about and and the only way you're going to influence them if you is if you're passionate about what it is that you're doing and the only way to be passionate about it is to love it because if you love it then you're inspiring and you're you're inspired and then you can become inspiring. So I'm going to tell you guys, those of you listening that are, that are thinking about multifamily, if you don't love it, you better learn to love it. And you can learn to love it as well. You associate pleasure with pieces of it. Like, you know, I, I equate it to hunting for buried treasure because, because that's truly what you're doing. But if you can associate pleasure to things and learn to love them, including exercise and things like that. But again, if you don't learn to love this business, for God's sakes, go do something else because life is too short and you will not be able to influence people if you don't love it because they feel you. I mean, they, like I talked about intuition with a partnership, they feel you and, and, and your success hinges on your ability to influence. Would you agree yeah, with so me? Yeah, so I'll challenge that just a little bit. It's an interesting perspective, uh, okay. Rod. Uh, it's an interesting perspective. I, okay. I, I don't think you need to love multifamily real estate. I, I don't think it's a, okay. it's a requirement to do that. Um, because here's here's the thing, like it, it, we we're all wired to be productive to work for a living, right? Especially especially men. Men, men are like we got to do stuff. We have to solve problems. We got to fix stuff, right? I'm not saying it's just you know because I'm a man, I, I know where we're coming from. But and and so it's 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 not that we necessarily have to love that which we do necessarily. However, back mm -hmm. to focus and why we're doing something. I think that the end we have a tool here that will get us to where we need to go, which is financial freedom, passive income. The only thing my requirement is I don't have to, I, I just don't want to, I, I can't hate it. Like I can't dread go, getting up every day. And if I play my, to my strengths, like you said before, I don't, even, even if my, if multifamily real estate, if, if it's your strengths, yeah, if it's then your you're strengths, those are things you love anyway. That's what I'm saying. So, so, okay. so I, what, those are what the I'm things you love. Like I could, what I'm saying is anyway, I, I might, that, that's why it's, I, they, they tie, tie yeah, together. Yeah, they kind of do. But let's say I, I'm just really passionate about traveling with my family, let's say, okay, which, which I am. Okay. And that is really my goal. That's really what I want. And I'm using uh, this financial vehicle to kind of get there. And so my primary love isn't necessarily multifamily syndication, though having said okay. that, if I All hate right. it, right. that's going to be a problem. But I think- All right, I, I, I don't disagree <laughs> yeah. with yeah, you. Yeah. The only thing I'm going to add is I really believe those that are super successful in this business have learned to love it because because then they're inspiring and yeah. then they then they people want to be around them because of their energy and they, and it's so obvious that they freaking love it and they learn it faster so if you can learn to love it you're gonna you're yeah. gonna learn much faster um you know i remember in high school i i basically almost did almost didn't graduate because i flunked out a senior year but there was one class ancient egyptology that i freaking loved and i got straight a's and i still know all that stupid ancient Egypt but but the point is it, you will learn faster so I don't I don't disagree that you can't do it without loving it yeah. but I will tell you I think you'll go faster further and bigger if you do so, so yeah 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 and absolutely okay. I mean you, right. you, you gotta and, and the other thing also and, and, and we and we only live this life once right. too Michael that's right right and yeah. we only live once and God if you're not enjoying it or loving yeah. it that's a shame to me. Yeah, it is, man. It, but I, that's just sad to I, me. I think people, while they might not love it, they 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 love pieces of it, like dealing with people, yeah. for example, or raising sure. money. Or sure. what I see is most powerful. When you talk about passion and influence, what I see most powerful is when when the, the you know the goals, the financial goals for oneself, kind of expands into more of a mission. Okay, so they become more passionate about, let's say, educating people or uh, telling people about multifamily syndications that get out of the stock market. Like once it starts getting into that, it it grabs gravitates more from multifamily real estate to what is my mission with that, right? And that's when it becomes very powerful and it becomes almost bigger than the actual vehicle that they're driving in. And so, uh, uh, but bottom line agree. is this, and I, this is what I do agree with you, passion is key. Cash, passion is key because that's what gets you up every single day, right? If, if you're not passionate and, about what you do. I don't do, think you can fake it. No. I don't no, think I don't you think can you fake, fake it. it. 
and 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 that's that's the thing and and so yeah you know and and again life is too freaking short if you don't if you don't really enjoy what you're doing please go do something else because you know life is just it, it's i mean you know kobe bryant look at that i mean you know it just it's just it, you never know when things can happen and 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 it's over but it's it's and tough so, rod right it's it's tough when when someone's working 50 plus hours a week and they don't really love their job right and you tell them hey right. hey fred why don't you uh why don't you stop doing that which you don't love right and fred's like well, you know, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, dude, I got to provide for my family. Like, you know, you're, you're being, you're, you're, you know, you're in the clouds. Well, I'm going to say this. Okay. First of all, I don't care if you're working 50 hours a week, you can do this multifamily game on the side. There's no question. You can't. Okay. You can, I know you can. I mean, you and I each have students that have retired from their core high paying yeah. jobs that from, because of the income in this multifamily space and with kids, with families, with these 50, 60 hour a week jobs, they still did it. Okay, so there is that. But, but um, you know, listen, the thing I tell my students that say they hate their core job, I tell them, listen, you bring 150% there to your core jobs like you do to this multifamily game because how you show up there is how you show up everywhere. So you just bring it and you, you only have to grind for a few years to get what it is you want regardless of your core job. Uh, but let, let's talk about a couple other things that I don't want to forget about. One of them is, is, is who you hang out with. Because who you hang out with is who you become. The, your peer group is so critical. Big. And like, you know, you and I both have incredible ecosystems with, with, with students and events and things that get together and, and they build their teams and they, they hold each other accountable. And, and, and I will tell you, you guys have heard it said, you know, you are the five people you hang around with. And it's not just money. It's your health. It's your happiness. It's, it's astounding the impact of who you hang out with has on your life, okay? And I will tell you, if you've got fearful and negative people around you, sometimes they're family, I would say love them, but choose your peers because you want people that will hold you accountable. And that's, again, when I was losing everything, I was in that part, that that peer group, people saying, hey, what are you doing? What are you What are you up to right now? You know, quit quit being a little puss, you know, and, and get moving and, 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 you know, and be around people that think what you think is hard is easy. You know, uh, it, it's just critical. You know, if you're, if, you're, if you're learning tennis, you want to be around, you want to be playing someone that, that's better than you, not worse than you. So, so um, you know, your peer group is just a critical piece of this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. And, and they, they want the same thing you want, and they're going to be much more supportive than even your friends and family, which is heartbreaking uh, and many, many right. times as well. Yes. It is. You, and you can only carry about five people on your back at a time. So that's, that's, you can try to bring them along, but I will tell you, um, if, if the student's not ready, it doesn't matter. I, I've sent dozens of people to Tony events, for example, and I think out of the 30, I've sent maybe one or two people got something. You know, they have to want it. They have to want more. They have to reach that satiation or that, that pivot point, that leverage on themselves to, to take action. Um, so yeah, and it's re anyway. it's relatively easy to build, right? I mean, you, you attend your events or my events or other events, and you create yeah. these mini you know, mastermind groups of a handful of people, and boop, there Absolutely. you go. Absolutely, accountability. There's groups. your peer group. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's incredibly powerful when you have people that that you're around that want more out of life, that have you know uh, Napoleon Hill calls it. Um, you know, he calls it the mastermind. And, and he, his definition of a mastermind is when you get two like minds together, they create this third intangible third mind that's greater than the sum of the parts. And, you know, if you've got two minds that, that, that have what he calls a definiteness of purpose, idea, you know, in other words, they're, they're headed, they're interested in the same thing, headed the same direction. It's incredible what comes out of that. So you want to be around those people. All right, this is great. This is uh, good stuff, Rod. Anything else that comes to mind? Uh, success yeah, sure. Habits? Well, you've got to, you've, you've got to have success habits. Okay. We all have habits every day. So these habits either help you or they hurt you. These habits take the trajectory of your life up or down. And you know what I'm talking about, you listening. Okay. Health related. You know, uh, me, I suffer from, from a sweet tooth and I, I, I know it's bad for me. And, and it's a, it's a negative habit, but you, you have to, you have to establish successful habits, you know, habits that, that, that help you with your focus and help you have clarity on your goals, making sure that you're not getting caught up in busy work, clearing your desk off, you know, making sure you're taking massive action, make sure, making sure that you're incorporating the Pareto principle and focusing on the things that are going to get you further faster, you know, making sure you're not letting your relationships, 
get, you know, suffer like I did back in the day, making sure you, you've put an incredible team together and, and the things that you're doing daily. You know, my, my love language is gifts. And, and there's a great book called The Five Languages of Love. If you haven't talked about it on your show, it's an awesome book that everyone should read. Uh, but my love language is gifts. I love to give gifts. And so my students get books from me almost every month. And one of them is a book called The Slight Edge. And it's about those little decisions that you make every day that truly traject your life up or down. So this is an example of that. And of course, health is such a critical piece because for you to have that core job 50, 60 hours a week and this side hustle that's 10 to 20 hours a week and be a great parent and be a great spouse, you've got to have incredible energy. So your health is, is, is foundational. Yeah. It's critical. And then, and then one more piece of this is tenacity, grit persistence, determination, not freaking giving up. You know, there's a book called Three Feet from the Gold. Mm. And you talked about people, they'll, they'll give up after a few months and, and they literally could be three feet from the gold. You know, it's staying power, endurance, stubbornness. It's keeping going at it even when you're tired. I will tell you, tenacity beats talent all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's probably one of the most important pieces of success. I remember I had a litigation support company back in 2010. I was right on the verge of bankruptcy and I changed my approach. See, that's the key. That's a, that's a strategy for success. You have to know what it is you want. If, if the direction you're headed is not working, you hit a wall, you've got to change your approach, keeping your eye on that goal. If that doesn't work, you change your approach again, keeping your eye on the goal. And, and that's a success formula it is, is knowing what it is you want and changing your approach until you get it. So back to that litigation support company, I almost went bankrupt and I changed my approach. It turned into a $10 million company with 60 employees that I sold last year. And and so, again, that tenacity is critical. It's, it's getting knocked down 99 times and getting up 100. And so critical, courage, resolve, you know, strength of character, strength of will, you know, all of these things, you know, having that backbone. And that's why, to me, I think the more pleasure you can associate with it, the easier it is for you. You and, and 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 remember, it's not a sprint. And I'm Michael, I know you tell your students this. It's not a get rich quick thing. It's to become super freaking wealthy over time thing. And one deal truly can change your life. But but it's not a it's not a you know a get rich quick thing. It's you you got to believe in it. You got to stick with it. Um and and yeah. ideally bring the passion and. And success is inevitable. Yeah, it's it is inevitable, and we use words, different words that kind of mean the same thing: tenacity, grit, hustle. And I think the bottom line is that we have to commit to the outcome. I think sometimes we commit, we kind of commit to a goal, and we add, kind of add a deadline or a metric because that's what we're told about goal setting, which isn't isn't all bad. But what if you miss that goal? What if you miss your deadline? What if you miss your goal? Most people will give up in frustration. Oh, I missed my goal. It, it obviously is not working versus, and Hal Elrod talks about it in, in his book. Instead of that, you commit to the outcome for as long as it takes, no matter what it takes. So if it takes six months longer, so what, right? If, you, if your goal is 10 of something, you only get five of something. Does that mean it's a failure? No, you already have five. So really, we need to commit to the outcome. And so as much as I would I love, love to show people how they can do their first deal in 30 days, you know, some people do, but what if it takes six months? What if it, what if it takes nine months? What if it takes 18 months? Who cares, right? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Just freaking do yeah. it for God's yeah. sakes. It's so worth it, yeah. you know, and, and, and are you going to have setbacks? You better, better believe it. Are you going to have problems? You better believe it. Problems are a gift. Problems gives you feedback. You know, the only people that don't have problems, frankly, are dead. And like Henry Ford said, an airplane takes off against the wind. You know, uh, without problems, we don't change. And, and you know, setbacks and shakeups really are there to wake you up. You know, and, and if you don't have problems, you're not really not trying. And, and maybe you're in the comfort zone. The comfort zone's a warm place, but nothing freaking grows there. Oh, this is great, Rod. You're, get, you're getting fired up. Yeah. This, is, this is great. So this is your, kind of your, parting, your, your parting advice now, right? You're sitting across from someone and they're just, and you, get, you can just, what do you, you want to say? You want to get that person I, I motivated. Say, I will say this. I will say this, the most important emotion in all of this is gratitude. You have to be grateful and, and it, you can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. You can't be angry and grateful at the same time. And gratitude makes us stronger when we're in adversity. It strengthens our immune system, makes our heart stronger, brings us closer to our spirituality. You know, you've got to incorporate gratitude. And I know Hal Elrod talks about, uh, you know, uh, journaling or scribing, he calls it every day. And I, I recommend having a gratitude journal, capturing magic moments, remembering why you love this life and the beautiful things that are in your life and maybe having a list of 
questions you ask yourself um, that, that, you know, like asking yourself, who do I love? Who loves me? Um, you know, I have this big giant list of questions that I'll sit and I'll just think and ask myself. And, uh, and in fact, I'll give that to your listeners as well. Um, it's a, another text, text 41411 and put in thinking questions, one word thinking questions. Oh no, thinking. I'm sorry. Just thinking the word thinking to 41411. It's like 20 pages of questions there on every aspect of your life, but you want to continually be as, you know, asking yourself how you make it better and associating with gratitude. This is great, man. You're dropped the value bomb on the listeners. I love it so much. Uh, people, how Thank can you. people connect with you, Rod? Yeah. So, so listen, um, I, I used to give away my book for free, 200 page book. And then finally my team's like, Hey, knucklehead, uh, we can make some money with this. So we put it on Amazon and, and, and I gave away 20,000 copies of it, but now it's on Amazon. It's a bestseller, but I gave away now I've got, I created this tool book. Yeah, that's not it. I created this here. It is. I created this tool book and it's 70 pages. It's like a due diligence checklist on steroids and, and it's free and there's no fluff in it. It's not a sales pitch. It's just every possible question I could think of that you want to ask if you're considering an apartment building and just text Rod, my name to 41411 and, uh, and, and you'll get the direct download on that. And it's truly, a, 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 I'm really proud of it. So that that's probably the best way to get into my ecosystem. But you know, my website's got a ton of stuff, you know, my web, my podcast, uh, just a blessing where almost seven and a half million downloads. And, um, you know, I do my live events like you do, uh, rodsbootcamp.com. I do live events like you. And uh, so, you know, just loving what we're doing here, right, bro? Yeah, man, just, you know, educating people, getting them from single family house, investing into gift. something a little, little better. So, Rod, it's always great to have you on your show. Thank you for being here. Thanks, my friend. So good, right? So here's some summaries here from what I remember from the interview. First of all, limiting beliefs are exactly that. They are beliefs that limit your ability to achieve something. And all these ones that we mentioned, such as I don't have the time right now, is the market too hot, let me wait, I don't have enough experience, I don't have enough money, those are actually all myths. You don't need any of those. You don't need experience, you don't need your own cash because you're going to raise it. Right now is a great time, right? So these are all limiting beliefs. You got to figure out how to overcome those because they're not actually real. They're literally made up in your brain that will prevent you from actually moving forward. So, so really tackle those things head on and figure out what you can do to overcome them. So learning from limiting beliefs is one thing, but also looking at success habits of those people who are successful. And Rod talked about a lot of them. Uh, the thing that kept popping up is, is a burning desire. You're really going to want it, right? And if you really want it, if your why is really strong, if you've made that decision, everything else flows from that. We can talk about hustle and grit and, and, and success habits and morning routines, but really at the, at the end of the day, it's got to come from a burning desire, from a decision of you and your family wanting to change their life in some way. And we talk about in the show, multifamily investing is the fastest, most reliable, most repeatable way to actually achieve financial freedom in extremely short order. Most people do it within one, maybe two years, and, and that's it. And that is super, super powerful. There's really no other business in the world that can that can do that. So it also comes down to burning desire. If you really want to change that the life of your of you and your your family, and you want to build up passive income so you can do whatever you want with whoever you want when you want, this is the way to do it. Everything else flows from that. Once you ha make that point, it becomes a little more tactical, right? It's like, well, how do I get started? How do I create a peer group? Where do I get my education? Um, yeah, got to And then the other thing is dealing with adversity. We talked about positive expectation. We talked about gratitude, right? Those are all very important because how do we deal with setbacks and challenges? And this is the way we do it. We have to have a peer group, a support group. If we're grateful every day, it gets us through some of those hard times. I remember back in the, in the restaurant days, some pretty dark days. And if I hadn't been focused on what I'm grateful for, and if you really make a list of what you're grateful for, there actually are a lot of things you're grateful for. Now, crap's hitting the fan somewhere else, but there are so many things you're grateful for, and it puts your mind in a different time frame. So those are some of the success habits that Rod outlined. Super awesome. Uh, and speaking of peer group uh, and really trying to accelerate the time frame, really excited about our mentoring program. I mean, our students are getting unbelievable results. And if you value mentoring, if you have the ability to invest in yourself, then check out our mentoring program. It's at themichaelblank.com forward slash mentor. And you just schedule a free strategy session with us and, if, and explore if mentoring is right. And if it's not, we'll point you in the right direction. So it really is a, probably the best 30, 40 minutes that you've spent this year in trying to point you in the right direction. So if, if you value mentoring, that's for you. Go to themichaelblank.com forward slash mentor. My observation is that with enough grit, 
people always become successful. If you're able to work with a full-time syndicator though, the deals come faster and they're bigger and the entire timeline is compressed considerably if you're in a position to do that. So check that out. It is for your consideration. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you grab those tickets, guys, okay? They're selling up pretty quick. Uh, because we are in the same space where we were last time. It was so magical at DealMaker Live. So go to DealMakerLiveEvent.com. We only have room for 500 people. And we were there last year. We're going to get there pretty quick this year. And the tickets are also going up in price. So make sure you don't miss the event of the year. It was magical last year. It's going to be the same thing this year. DealMakerLiveEvent.com. Catch you guys in the next episode. <laughs>